So this is the Eufy Make EV1 UV printer, which allows you to color print on pretty much anything. This machine just launched in Kickstarter and we're gonna do a full overview of what this thing can do and how you might use it in your shop. Okay, so this is my first time ever using a UV printer. Uh, and honestly, it's been pretty wild seeing the type of stuff that you can do. So you can print in full color directly on all types of materials. So this is just like a piece of maple uh, that I printed directly onto the wood and you can do full color prints on pretty much anything. So you might be familiar with like a resin 3D printer where you have a tank of resin at the bottom, uh, then you have an LCD screen which shines UV light and then cures a layer and then it slowly builds up those layers. So this more or less is doing the exact same thing. You get these UV ink cartridges that just drop in right here. Uh, there's actually six of them. So you have cyan, magenta, yellow, black, white, which we'll get into white in a minute, and then a gloss. And then for the printing part of it, it's basically kind of like an inkjet printer. So there's a printer head in it, it feeds in the right colors and then it prints on the surface. But what makes this unique and why this is a UV printer is it comes back with a UV light and it actually cures that ink directly on your material. So with like a normal inkjet color printer, you can't print onto wood or metal because that ink actually needs to absorb into the material and that's how you get a print. But with this, the ink is actually on top of the material. So you have fully cured resin on top of your base material. And that's all happening within the print head right here. Now, since it's instantly curing a layer of resin, you can actually come back on top of that layer and add a new one. So just like how a resin 3D printer will cure a layer and then move up, this kind of can do the same thing. And so you can produce like two and a half D designs. Now, this is Cassian Andor I did on a small ceramic tile, uh, but it's actually raised up. So it's curing multiple layers of UV resin to give you that effect. Now, this machine can actually do a max of five millimeters. And that's what this is. This is like a weird uh, top down view of New York City. Uh, but in the B roll, you can see this is raised up a good bit off of the surface of the ceramic. So that opens you up to a whole lot of possibilities that you can't just do with a standard printer. Now, with all that being said, let's actually get into this machine and talk more about how this works. Now, quick disclosure, Yuffie did send me this machine to make this video. This is a paid video, so this isn't like a formal review of this machine. And especially because we're talking about Kickstarter, I don't wanna do a review of a machine that isn't shipping and like fully manufactured. Uh, but from everything I can tell, um, this is basically a finished product. And I wouldn't make this video and put it out if I didn't think this was really cool. Uh, and I do think this is really, really cool. So let's get into the machine uh, and let's turn on the lights on the inside to so get a better idea of what's going on with it. Probably the first thing that stands out um, is the form factor. So if I was to turn this to the side, um, it's actually not that deep. So it is kind of the same thickness as like your normal inkjet printer, but it's got a few tricks up its sleeve um, so that you can still print on large materials. So the front and the back um, open up so you have full access to it and actually have something that I just printed right here, uh, Baby Yoda, because it always has to be. But this work bed right here is interchangeable. So if I was to unlock this guy right here, pop this out. It also comes with, and I'm gonna do this backwards and make sure I get this right, a large work bed and I'll lock this into place, which is like 13 by 16 inches. And then what it's doing on the back is it actually has a drive system. So it can push the work bed through the machine and then the print head is just staying in the same spot. So you can do much bigger things as a result of it. Now I'm gonna drop the mini one back in because when you have the mini one in, um, you can actually close the front and the back. Um, so it's more or less fully enclosed. I mean, there still are some gaps and this is like flexible acrylic. Um, so it's not the most robust and they do have on the top and we'll talk about this tape here in a minute, a carbon filter uh, that can just pop out. So this is replaceable and that can just pop right back in because since we are dealing with resin, um, that's really not odor that you want to be smelling. So it's nice that they've got that included. Now, obviously, if you have the front and the back open, um, you definitely will be exposed more to the odors. But in using this a good bit with basically the entire thing open, um, I really didn't notice the fumes. So especially if you're coming from like a laser engraver or a laser cutter, the filtration aspect of it isn't a big deal. All right, so dropping this down, I'll just show you the top. So this is removable and this gives you access to the print cartridges. So they're all right here on the back. And there's a sensor on this uh, where this actually won't fire if you have that cover removed, uh, which is nice 
because you are dealing with UV light. And then on the top, you have a really big start and stop button. And that's basically the only physical control um, you have on the machine uh, because everything you're gonna do with it is gonna be on their app um, or on your computer. Now, a cool design aspect of this um, is the fact that it's so tall. Uh, so this actually will rise up, um, so your entire work bed, uh, because the only movement with your print and laser head is just side to side. It doesn't go up and down. And they're given a maximum height of your objects at about 100 millimeters or about four inches. Um, so you can actually get some pretty thick stuff in here. But since this can raise up, that means you need to be able to focus it. Uh, and they have thought through that as well. So they're using a dual laser system. It's actually printed right here. So you have a laser on the front and the back right here, as well as the front and the back right here, or maybe it's just like a receptor on the other side. So then it like crosses the beams onto the material uh, to measure the height. And so then it knows exactly where it needs to dial in. I've printed on a bunch of different things that are different thicknesses um, and haven't had an issue whatsoever in getting that set up. The only kind of drawback with that process, it does take like up to 90 seconds for it to find focus. But once you get that focus dialed in, you'll be good to go. And one part of that focus process is it will take a picture of what's inside your work bed. So coming back over to the top, um, there's actually a camera right here and it's looking directly down. So if you're using the mini flat bed, it can do this all at once. Uh, but if you're using that bigger work bed, it basically has to move it, take a picture, move it, take a picture and stitch it together. We definitely have seen that process on like larger desktop lasers. I know like the Flux Beambox 2, which we just reviewed, does something kind of similar. Also that does take a while to get a full picture, but they do a good job of giving you alignment points as well. So if I take this off, um, this is basically just like you'd have with like a vinyl cutter. Um, so this is removable, um, just like if you have like a Cricut where this is an adhesive that is double stick on both sides. Um, so you can see I already have some stuff printed on it, but this is tacky. So your material will stick to it right here, but then it's sticking on the flip side as well. But it's nice because it's giving you a grid so you know where to line things up. Now, another big feature and honestly a big headache uh, with printers like this, especially like DTF printers, they require a good bit of cleaning and maintenance to keep everything from clogging up. And so they are providing what they call a cleaning cartridge. This actually fits in right here. I'm not gonna pull it out. And it has like a maintenance cycle where it's flushing the lines and keeping everything clean. Now one thing with that is you don't really turn this machine off. In fact, there is no power button on here. Again, the stop start is the only physical control. It does plug in right here. So to turn this off, you literally would just unplug it because it's designed to do that cleaning process. And it basically uses like a three tier system. So about every hour, it puts a little bit of ink through the lines just to keep everything fresh and good to go. It does the same thing every 24 hours. I think it's a little bit more, but then after three days of not using it, it automatically uses the liquid inside of their cleaning cartridge to flush the lines completely. So at that point, it can go into like long-term storage more or less, which if you've used any like DTF style printer, uh, coming back to it like weeks or even months of no use, uh, a lot of times you're gonna to come back to clog. So it'll be really interesting uh, for a long-term review to kind of see how that cleaning process works. Now they're saying with like average use of about five times a week of using your machine that those cleaning cartridges are gonna last you about two months. Um, so that is gonna be something that you have to replace. Same thing with the ink cartridges as well. Um, you'll have to get them directly from Eufy Make. So like most printers, they're locked to the specific machine. Now the last thing in terms of the physical design that I wanted to talk about is uh, basically the reason why they've made this thing so tall. That is because you can put in a rotary unit. So I'm gonna drop that in right here and it's gonna, it's gonna slot in and then lock into place. And then with that in there, you can load in like a cup or a tumbler or whatever you wanna use. And then you can still run this thing fully enclosed and it all fits within the unit. Now, since I review a ton of lasers, I usually get a lot of different rotaries that might work with it. Um, there's some really good ones, but a lot of times they're pretty expensive. And this one fixes a lot of the problems that are hard about rotaries. First, getting it in line with the machine. Now you just saw me put it in uh, and it actually locks into to a specific spot. So this right here is matching up with the hole um, on, I guess like the work bed assembly. So there is no movement like forward or back. Everything is locked and rock solid. And the last thing is if you have like a cup or tumbler in there, a lot of times like the top of it will be wider than the bottom. So there is a motor on this side. So this entire thing can raise up to level it out. And it can use that dual laser autofocus system um, to measure different points on this to figure out how to level it out. That is 
super handy and a big pain a lot of times. So overall, a really nice implementation of a rotary, and I'm really liking their quick release multi work bed system. Real easy uh, to swap things in and out. All right, let's talk about some of the different things that you can make on this machine and kind of the different printing methods that it uses to get there. Um, first off is just your standard CYMK print. Uh, so that is just what this is. This was already white, so it's just dropping color directly on top of it. It's got a DPI of 1440. So from what I can tell, these can look really nice. Now, another version of that is the same thing, but hopefully you can see it in the B-roll. Um, there is a gloss finish on top of it. Um, so compared to this one, if I kind of move them in the light, this one's not going to be as reflective. It's like a matte finish uh, where then you have this gloss on top. And that is because you basically have a clear resin uh, that they're treating as a gloss. So this is kind of like a two-step print process. First, it puts down your color layer, then it comes back on top and it does its gloss. Uh, and I don't know if you can hear it right now, but it's actually doing that like one hour maintenance cycle. Um, so it's not super loud, but if that's what's picking up on camera, that's what's going on. From there, I wanted to do a large print. And so just in terms of timing, these took about three minutes. Uh, so not super long, but to print something like this, this took like between 30 minutes to an hour. And the key part of that is this is also a two layer process. So um, it does look glossy, uh, but I don't think I did the glossy layer on this. I think that's just the sheen reflection in the light. But because this wasn't a white surface underneath, it actually put a white layer down first, and then it printed the color layer on top of it. So if you've done DTF printing, especially on shirts, you know that's a two-step process. We're gonna have a white under layer, and then your color's gonna go on top. Because if you did it, a lot of these colors would be muted and your whites just wouldn't look good at all. So it does add time when you're printing on materials that aren't already white, but you still are gonna get really rich colors that work well with it. Now moving on from there, something we we had already talked about um, is that two and a half D aspect of it. Again, this is just a ceramic tile. And these were actually really easy to make. We haven't talked a ton about their software, but it's pretty comparable to a lot of the other like design softwares that are out there. Um, you can bring in different elements and like a lot of other programs, they're starting to integrate AI. So there's some like AI art generation stuff, but one of the things uh, that they're using AI for that I'm finding super useful is taking a flat image like this and then pulling depth out of it. So this is something you can do directly in their software. And then what's cool is they'll give you a 3D preview. Um, so you literally can move it around like this and see what that texture is gonna look like because you can adjust how far out you wanna pull this. So this was like two and a half millimeters, whereas my like building city one was the full five millimeters. Now, just like how this guy took longer uh, because we are adding a white underlayer, a uh, same thing with this. This takes much longer to do because you're printing and curing this in a bunch of different layers. And this is something you could do with like a normal um, filament style 3D printer like the Bamboo X1 Carbon behind me or like a resin printer if you want even more detail. But the color aspect of it is what you just can't do. You can do like multicolor prints on a 3D printer. That one has an AMS system on it that gives you like four different colors. Uh, but it's nothing like a true like print head where you're getting like millions of different colors because it's combining them together. And even with a full resin, 3D printer that typically is just going to be a single color that if you want to make it look just not monochrome you're gonna to have to paint it yourself. Now I did uh, do a small uh, metal print because I kind of want to show you a comparison of something that is laser engraved so uh, this is actually going to be the foot to R2D2 which is chilling behind me. Uh, and so I laser engraved like his head logo right here. But on this side, I just went ahead and put a full color print of R2-D2. And if you're running your finger across it, you definitely can tell this is raised up uh, versus the laser engraved is engraved in. But I think a really cool use case of this is combining laser engraving and color printing together. So that's what I did with these like metal business cards. I first printed his face in full color, but then I took this to a fiber laser and then quickly removed this top coating um, to give me all of the text as well as the logo. Um, so a really, really cool effect and like combining different technologies together. And again, this one makes it really easy to get the focus and the alignment all right, and then send it to my laser or like vice versa. And then you saw this 
this already, uh, but I also did like an example of just printing directly onto a mug. You can use all of the same printing processes. So if like this is a dark mug, you might want to put white underneath and then put the color on top. Maybe you want gloss on top. In this case, this is just uh, the color. But then another really fun use case uh, is using that same design. I did this right here. Uh, and this isn't actually printed directly onto the wood. This is a sticker that I printed onto film that then I was able to put onto wood or whatever I want it to be. So it's like a full out decal. And these are like two other versions of those. And so to do this, you'll first print it onto the work bed. And then they have just like a normal laminator uh, as an accessory. And so then you laminate that, which then allows you to transfer the sticker to whatever you want it to be on. Now I was only doing these stickers as like a really thin sheet on the mini flatbed but you could totally put in the standard one and then laminate a huge sheet of stickers and then cut those out individually and you're good to go. Now the process for printing the sticker is actually its own custom setting and uh, I believe it is doing a white layer underneath uh, but if you're looking at it the black is actually raised up so it's doing some like fancy processing where the end result of this uh, looks really, really nice and really, really professional. And speaking of processing, if you are coming from a direct to film or DTF style printer, so you usually have to use a uh, RIP software and RIP is all of like the fancy calculations where it's converting um, like a pixel color into however much ink it needs to get in the location. Um, it does all of that for you all within their software. So it really is just like using a standard printer to tell it the process you wanna use. So whether it's the white underneath and the gloss on top, and then you send it and then everything is connected wirelessly. This actually beeps at you. So there is like a little speaker right here uh, asking you to start it. You hit start and you're good to go. Now this also has an app that is pretty full featured. So I did a lot of stuff on the desktop just because it was easier to use, but I totally did a few of these designs directly on my phone, just imported an image from my camera roll. I could take a picture with the machine, get everything lined up, send it to it and start. Uh, in fact, to actually set the machine up, um, you don't use a computer. So you connect it to your app to begin with, then it connects this thing to Wi-Fi, downloads all the updates, and then you're good to go. Something I always wished uh, that other software would do is just give you like a 3D pre preview of what this is gonna look like. And so for pretty much any of your designs, it's gonna do that. So you can tell what like, your like two and a half D textures are gonna look like. Um, or if you're doing a tumbler and you're doing like a full wrap, you have an idea of where things are gonna line up. Or if you have like a handle, it's gonna show you the center point. So you know where to line up your handle uh, if you want your logo like here uh, or more than likely right here on the front. Oh, and one final thing, the reason this tape is on here is because I had to do one final sticker and because I have lots of Star Wars stuff, instead of the EV one, I had to call this the UV one Kenobi. And yeah, just sticker directly on there. This is actually way bigger than I thought it was gonna be, but it still looks fun. So who do I think the UV1 Kenobi is for? I would say this is not for like a big production shop. Um, you probably already have a UV printer that's gonna have a much bigger work bed. It might even be like a vacuum work bed. So instead of using like a tacky uh, work surface like you would with a vinyl cutter, uh, the air is just going to be sucking it down. And those machines might have dual laser heads. Uh, so the speed and the throughput is a lot higher because really the only limiting thing I found for me so far is just like these bigger prints do take a while and especially if you're doing like two and a half D um, they can take a good amount of time even if the print is pretty small but for like a hobbyist or like a small business owner that's wanting to add color to some products that they're already doing this is a really really cool solution and all of that kind of brings me to the pricing a lot of those bigger machines are like five thousand bucks and up currently on Kickstarter they've got this thing under two thousand bucks and you guys can go to see all the pricing details because I'm sure that will change. Now there's one test that I like to run regardless of the type of machine that I'm doing. That is, would I bring this home so that anybody could use it test? So a lot of my machines I just keep in the shop, but this definitely opens up a whole nother world of possibilities I just really couldn't do before. And I know my wife and my kids are really excited to use it. Now I do plan on doing a full review in the future once the production unit comes out. But in the meantime, if you have questions about this, especially while this Kickstarter is running, you can leave them down in the comments comments below. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.